Static sites or pre-generated sites are blazing fast, as they consist of physical static files that don't require server-side processing. They are secure by default, as the tools and content required to build them don't need to be available anywhere publicly. Their scaling is also easy, as they support CDNs, and they don't overwhelm hosting providers, which is why their hosting is cheap, even if you require SLAs and uh, experience high traffic loads. But most importantly, unlike old legacy systems and working with old technologies, implementing and working with them is fun. That's why we developers love Gatsby. We are already sold. I'm Andre, I'm a dev evangelist at Kenico Content, and even though I did a lot of .NET development in the past, I now consider myself a Jamstack developer, as whenever I'm playing with uh, tools and new technologies, the outcome is always hosted on Netlify. Uh, apart from that, I own two 3D printers where I print uh, parts for my RC models and I like to play Age of Empires from time to time. And today I would like to tell you a story about Gatsby and content editors. Now, why about content editors? Like I said, we developers are already sold. We like Gatsby. We want to implement sites on Gatsby. But to make sure we can implement sites on Gatsby widely, not just on our pet projects, we need to understand that content is king. Really take a second here and think about how much content you consume without even visiting websites. How many Google searches gave you your answer right away without visiting anyone's site? Websites are essentially just a way of delivering that content to your visitors. But the content is what drives the success of your clients. Now, content is created by content editors. Just like we are experts in the development field, content editors are experts on creating content in their field. They do know a little bit of HTML because, well, we've allowed them to use WYSIWYG editors for the past two decades. But most importantly, they are closely tied to the visual representation of their work. Now, look at the traditional way of building sites. They are used to features like real-time previews, live site editing, precise time scheduling, and seeing the changes on their live sites right away. And now we come to them saying, hey guys, we have this great website improvement called Static Sites. The thing is, your content and website will be separated. You're gonna have to remember which content type goes where on the site, as there's gonna be no content tree. And with every content change, you're gonna have to wait Till the whole site is rebuilt before you can see your changes and that can take anything from a few minutes up to half an hour. So you see it's clear why I'm not a sales guy but you see why content editors aren't thrilled from this change. Hi there I'm Janetta I'm a content creator and editor and the reason why I'm not so excited about Gatsby right now is the preview. Basically if I want to see my latest content changes I need to wait around 25 minutes and then if the page doesn't look too good and I need to make some more tweaks, I have to wait another 25 minutes to check how it looks. And because of all this waiting, a simple landing page that you would probably create in less than an hour can easily take up your entire day, which is a bit frustrating, I would say, and it forces you to switch between tasks and, you know, you feel like all you do is just waiting, waiting, waiting. Wow, that was one sad content editor. The good news is we can make them love Gatsby. Let's take a look at how we can solve all these issues. First of all, it's the frequent and long builds. The first and obvious advice is to optimize your implementations. The things like removing unnecessary queries, stop doing you know, calculations on the data you don't really need and you don't need to be displayed on the site and so on. Now, that's really obvious, but I'm gonna put a pin in this one and come back to it um, in a minute. Next one is use incremental builds with Gatsby Cloud. It works like this. Gatsby Cloud hosts your site, but not um, the public site, only a preview version for editors. Your public site remains to be hosted on a platform of your choice, like Netlify. Content sits in a headless CMS like Canticle Content, and whenever an editor makes a change, on the change, not publish the page, the headless CMS fires a web notification to Gatsby Cloud saying, hey, uh, there's a content item change for you. Gatsby Cloud will take that change and it will perform an incremental build of the site. 
The incremental build only takes a fraction of the time compared to a full site rebuild because Gatsby only rebuilds the pages that are directly affected with the content item change. In the end, the editor is presented with a preview URL of uh, the site that already contains his changes. And once uh, they are happy with, the, with, these, with these changes, um, they can publish the page and Gatsby Cloud will perform a full site rebuild that will then be deployed to your host or you can create uh, the whole full page uh, site build on the host directly. That's uh, really your choice. Now, the only thing you're gonna need for this to work is uh, to use a headless CMS that has a first class integration with Gatsby. So let's see how it works and how we can set this up. This is the classic Gatsby Lumen sample site uh, that I took and connected it to headless CMS Kaneko content. Um, I've already made some other adjustments like display images and so on. I'm gonna show you those in a second so that I can generate some articles automatically and we have some content to start with. You see in the headless CMS I have about 2000 generated articles um, and I've already opened the site in Visual Studio Code so that we can see um, how long the build takes. Uh, I've already ran the command Gatsby develop and you see the whole build took about uh, one and a half minutes. Um, the getting data took 24 seconds and we generated about 2060 pages. Now let's take a look at how the website looks like. You see it's adjusted Gatsby Lumen site. It features some images here, um, but otherwise the implementation is pretty standard. Few templates, few pages, um, nothing special you wouldn't be familiar with. Now let's take a look at how we can take this site and have it built in Gatsby Cloud. So this is the main page of uh, Gatsby Cloud. If you haven't signed up yet, you have to go uh, through the get started uh, process. Uh, I'm already logged in, so I'm just gonna get in. And uh, you see the biggest button here is add a site, which is exactly what I wanna do. Now my site is already deployed on GitHub. Uh, so I'm gonna go with import from Git repository and select the provider, which is in my case, GitHub. Um, here I'm gonna select the Gatsby Lumen GC. It's uh, the repository's name and go next. Now, once the site is created, um, you will need to uh, set up an integration with your headless CMS. I'm gonna do that in a second, but just so you know, there are tutorials on how to do it for uh, many other CMS, not just for content. And the last step in building a site uh, on Gatsby Cloud is to define the environment variables. Now you see there are two tabs, build variables and preview variables. The build variables are for the whole full site rebuild. That's when the editor clicks publish and publishes a content item. Uh, that's when Gatsby Cloud builds your site and pushes it to the host of your choice. Of course, you can handle the whole build on another platform like Netlify. Um, but Gatsby claims it has some procedures in place that make it uh, much faster, uh, which is also my experience. The build uh, really take a bit uh, less. Uh, we're gonna focus on preview though. Uh, the preview variables should um, contain all the API keys and all the preview endpoints so that you can get the latest content from your CMS. Uh, in my case, uh, I'm gonna fill the language code to ENUS and uh, enable the preview. So there's an env environmental variable in my implementation that is called preview enabled. I'm gonna set that to true for the preview build. Now I'm gonna copy the project ID and preview key from my headless CMS. So this is the project ID. And there is the primary preview key. Now I'm gonna go back to build variables. I'm gonna do the same here, ENUS. Uh, I'm gonna fill also the project ID. Now the preview key doesn't have to be there because I'm gonna set preview enabled to false. This is for the uh, production build. Uh, although Gatsby won't let me, uh, Gatsby Cloud won't let me leave this empty. So I'm gonna copy the preview API key here anyway, but you can just set it to dummy value, it doesn't matter. Oh, I've made a mistake here. This should be project ID. And once you're ready with these variables, you can click save and uh, proceed to creating the site. Now, once the site is created, Gatsby will uh, trigger the first build. You see this uh, 
this is triggered by Gatsby Cloud and it's already building. The same happens for the CMS preview. So it's building both the full site build and the preview build. So let's give it a second here. Now, once we actually know it's a Gatsby site, we get much nicer logs. And you will see here that it's going to generate about 2000 pages. Okay, and we are done. It was built in one minute and two seconds. Let's restart it and clear cache. So you see that um, uh, the time required to build uh, will be pretty much uh, the same because we are doing again a full site rebuild triggered by a manual rebuild this time. And you see it was a little bit faster, 43 seconds. Now the builds are working, so we can go ahead and configure the webhooks that will trigger either the preview build or the full site build. So let's jump into setting, uh, site settings and uh, go into webhooks. There are two boxes for webhooks. First is preview, so let's uh, start with that. I'm gonna go into the headless CMS and set up a webhook, and the webhook is gonna be called preview. I'm gonna paste the URL here. And um, I'm not looking for delivery API triggers. Now this is configuring the preview build, the incremental build of Gatsby for only single content item changes. So we're looking only for delivery preview API triggers. In this case, I'm gonna go for create or update and delete um, so that it covers all the things that the editor can do. So let's save that. I'm gonna create also a build webhook that will uh, trigger the full site rebuild by uh, Gatsby Cloud. And in this case, I'm looking only for publish and unpublish of the delivery API. So once editor publishes the item, I want the CMS to fire a webhook to Gatsby Cloud to make a full site build. So in this case, it's publish and unpublish. So let's save that. And uh, let's go back to the CMS preview here and see the site um, uh, deployed, the preview site deployed. Now you see that there are some, some articles, uh, of course, um, they are generated, so they probably don't make a lot of sense. Uh, but what you can do is we can find this item in the CMS, change some content and see if it will successfully uh, trigger the preview webhook and if Gatsby will perform the incremental build. So let's go into content and assets. Um, I think, yeah, it's, it's the first item here, capacitor withdrawal port. So I'm going to open it and uh, we can just go ahead and change content here somehow. Uh, once the item is saved, you see here, uh, the webhook is fired and we should see in the UI of Gatsby that uh, the build was successfully triggered. Um, there are actually two, so I think that uh, uh, I was too slow and it triggered to rebuilds, but let's take a look at how fast the build is going to be. Now the full site build generated about 2060 pages or something like that. The incremental build should only generate about 18 pages because we're not just looking for the index page, for the main page and for the detailed blog post page, but we are also looking for uh, rebuilding the categories and tags pages uh, because they are also changed by, uh, by that blog post. So you see it was actually 17 queries here and the whole build took 40 seconds. Uh, let's see how the, the other incremental build will, uh, will be fast. But you see this is already a fraction of the time. So this is half the time uh, for the regular build. Uh, here I think we're gonna see even faster build. So this one took only 16 seconds. Now let's take a look at this site. It should be automatically reloaded. And here you see the content is already propagated on the site. So the incremental builds uh, are currently working. Uh, whenever we publish the item, uh, we should see a full site build in Gatsby Cloud. So let's try that. I'm gonna go ahead here and publish the item. And in a moment we should see here a new deployment here we go. So this is finally building the production bundle and it will, well, uh, obviously it's not going to deploy anywhere for now because I haven't configured a host. 
um, to, to be the target of my production build. You see it was already built, so it was very quick. And it also used the incremental build for, for this uh, uh, full site rebuild. So uh, you see it was confident enough to only regenerate part of the page uh, or part of the website and deploy it and uh, save you a lot of time because the full site build would take um, uh, way longer. Now remember that if just a few minutes ago I told you how important it is to optimize your site so that Gatsby can actually incrementally build it. I'm going to show you one use case that really required an optimization. It's on the original uh, Lumen implementation for Candico content. And when you look at a template called article, you're going to see here that it's using a GraphQL query to get all content item article, and then it's going to filter it based on a slug value. Now, if the implementation stays like this, it's not a good fit for incremental build because whenever you change an article, Gatsby will need to re rebuild all pages built on this template because you're asking for all content item article. So the changed content item is in that collection. So this will actually cause your Gatsby incremental build to not work. Now, when we look back here in my Visual Studio code, uh, how I changed that template. So I'm going to go into templates and article template. You're going to see here that I changed it to only use content item article, which is a single item that's filtered from the GraphQL uh, repository of nodes, right? So here it's uh, Gatsby knows that we're looking only for one item that is uh, filtered by the slug and thus enables the incremental build. And as a result, you only need to regenerate 18 uh, or 17 pages and not the whole website with 2000 pages. Now, the next problem is with finding the right content item. This may be easy for experienced editors who know the content model well, but may be very challenging for newcomers to the project. The use case is I find a page on the website that I know I need to change, but I can't go directly to the backing content item. I need to know the content type by heart or I need to search for unique enough phrases in the headless CMS in order to find the right content item. That's when Smartling SDK comes to help. Smartling SDK is a JavaScript bundle that you can import into your site. And whenever you are displaying data from headless CMS, you can read these content items in these special data attributes that describe the content item and its language. Now these attributes are added only on preview sites like the one hosted on Gatsby cloud and in the implementation can be switched on or off using an environmental variable. Now the SDK displays a little edit buttons right next to the content on your site's frame uh, that lead the editors right to the backing content item in the headless CMS. Let's check how it works. The way we can add content smarting SDK into our project is by first installing this NPM package. and then importing the uh, bundles into our layout. So these are the things we need for all the pages. We want to import the Smarting SDK and initialize it for the whole website. So I'm going to go into components and layout, and I'm going to add um, the imports uh, in here. So first of all, we import the smart link and we also import a style sheet that's uh, connected with it. Uh, this is so that the edit buttons look nice on um, the surface of your of your live site. Uh, then we obviously need to initialize it. So we're going to do that via React hook. So I'm going to copy paste that from the documentation. You see we're using the hook and we're initializing the content smartling SDK, which we just installed. The query parameter is something that needs to be present in a query string in order for the smartling SDK to be activated. So it's not going to be activated unless you specifically ask for it. Uh, so that's the next part. And the last thing we need to do is configure a project ID for the whole website. Uh, because in order to generate links back to the headless CMS, we need to know, or the SDK needs to know uh, what project ID is used as a source of data for your project. So I'm going to do that here. And I'm going to specify here data content project ID. And we're also going to need data content project, uh, sorry, not project, but 
language code name. In my case, it's ENUS. Uh, I'm gonna copy the uh, ID from uh, Gatsby Cloud site settings. So I'm copying the project ID and save it. So that's the first part. The next part is this actually enables the Smartling SDK for the whole website. And then I need to adjust the article component and define where each content item uh, fields are rendered. So in this case, I want to set up uh, data content item ID for the whole uh, component. So this uh, tells the Smartling SDK, this is the item with this ID rendered right here. I already have the item ID available here. You see it's coming from data.system.id, so it's really the ID coming from the headless CMS. And then I need to decorate all the places where specific, uh, specific elements of the content item are rendered. So in this case, it's gonna be data content element code name. In this case, it's date. Now I'm going to copy this attribute and paste it on other places too. So here we have a category. And we also have the article title here. And the last thing here is the description. In this case, the description is called content. Now I'm going to save this and run the build in a second. But just so you know, these code names actually correspond to your content items and content model of uh, the headless CMS. So we can take a look at article here and you will see that here is my title, code name is title. Here is my content, code name is content, date and category. So these directly correspond to um, these uh, special attributes. Now let's try to see uh, the changes on the live site. I'm going to do a quick build here to make sure uh, we've done everything correctly. And the build is completed. Let's take a look at localhost 8000. Now you see there is no change here currently because we don't have the query string parameter. I'm going to put here the query string preview mode, which was configured in the initialization of the Smartling SDK. Now once I do that, you see that the elements that I marked with codename uh, attribute are now uh, selectable. And when I click on the edit button, it will take me directly to the headless CMS UI to the backing item of that specific content. And you can see I can directly change this. Now I'm going to cut the video right here. I'm going to push it to GitHub, uh, perform another uh, build. And we're going to take a look at Gatsby Cloud preview site if uh, that works also there. Now we are back in Gatsby Cloud. You see uh, that my git push uh, actually triggered the build here. Here you see the commit message. And once this is built, I'm gonna open uh, the preview site. Currently it's unavailable because the preview is now building. Um, so once it's gonna be available, I'm gonna click on it and we're gonna check if the Smartling SDK um, is working on the preview site too. Okay, perfect. Now it's uh, successfully built. Now let's take a look at the preview site. So without the query parameter, we should see no change here. And once I add the preview mode here in the query string, we should see um, the clickable elements. So you see this way I can get directly in the headless CMS. Now this solved only one direction, from the website to the headless CMS. But content editors also like to have a direct path from the CMS back to their site. Now almost all headless CMSs have these preview buttons that editors can click on uh, and it will redirect them to their site. But what we can also do is take the site and put it directly in the headless CMS UI. Now the CMS obviously doesn't know your site that well. so First, you need to tell it where each content item gets rendered, on which route. For example, on this site, all the blog posts are uh, rendered on slash article slash URL slug route. Let me show you how this works. We call this feature Web Spotlight, and uh, you can enable it right from the UI of uh, your project in the headless CMS. So it's uh, right here in settings, um, one click away. 
Once you activate it, it's gonna uh, create a new, new tab in the menu and it tells you that it's gonna uh, set this project up as a website. Now, what that means is Web Spotlight is gonna create a virtual content tree for your editors so they can navigate through the items. Uh, it doesn't mean that uh, you cannot consume the project using mobile apps and other channels. Um, it just means it's gonna create a new virtual tree for you. So I'm gonna set this up as a website. Uh, you see currently I have a homepage here which was generated automatically for me. Uh, and the preview is not available for this item because I haven't set up the preview URLs yet. So let's take a look uh, at the Gatsby Cloud preview URL. Uh, I'm gonna copy this. And I'm gonna set up the preview URLs uh, to go to that address because that's uh, what's always gonna hold the latest content. I'm gonna set up um, new preview URLs for article and homepage. For homepage, so that we can get an index page of the preview site uh, that will go directly to uh, the URL provided by Gatsby Cloud. And the article will have a full URL defined. So it's articles slash the URL slug. Now, once this is saved, uh, we can go back to Web Spotlight. And you see that the page was uh, already rendered in the uh, right frame. Now, what I can do here, I can also add a link or link existing pages, contact and about me. So you see when it's filtered to page content type that I already had in my project before, I can link these two in here. And uh, now what I can do is I can adjust the content items directly from the headless CMS UI. So when we are on the index page, you see I can go uh, and edit the, this content item directly. So I can just change content right here or I can open it in editor. So this opens the full content item. You see, I have all the fields available here. And when I'm happy with how the items look like, if I make any changes, I can go back to preview. And because we've already set up the preview URL, um, it will render the page uh, of, uh, of that content item, which, which this content item is the source of data for. So you see it's the full article, not the index page anymore. But let's go back to the index page. Um, I want to also show you how um, you can change the content directly from this UI. So when I open this, um, this content item, I don't need to go inside because I already have this item in draft. It's already being worked on. So this change is from Web Spotlight directly. And you're going to see that um, this content item was just saved. So Gatsby Cloud should now receive a webhook that uh, this change happened. So let's take a look here. You see that uh, there is a trigger and we're gonna see an incremental build right now. Now, of course, this takes a few seconds. Um, currently, the preview builds take about 20 seconds. Uh, in the case of my site, this one took 14. And once this happens, uh, we can just close this editor. We can go back here and just refresh the preview and you see the change directly here. We can also open this in editor and we're gonna see that in the preview here as well. So this is how editors can work with Gatsby from within the headless CMS directly and don't need to open any more tabs. Now all these improvements make lives of your content editors much happier. To give you a complete picture, if you're using another CMS like Contentful, uh, you may also like Stegbit Studio, which also allows you to edit the website's content directly in the Studio's UI. Some other CMSs will also allow you to directly create tree-based structure of content, although it comes at the price of decreased flexibility for other channels. But if your major aim, or maybe the only aim, is uh, website development, uh, both of these things will be a great quality of life improvement for your editors. Now, the last tip I have for you, which is very basic and almost free to implement, is to add a special uh, workflow step called preview that the editors can use to trigger their own build with the latest content item changes. If you can't do anything else, this will allow editors to preview their changes quickly and when they feel like it. And that removes their greatest pain. Thank you for your attention. I hope you learned something new. If you want to get in touch, feel free to stop by our virtual booth or ping me a message on Twitter. And uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference.